Dr. M. Krishnamurti. We'll be now, um, we now invite the first speaker, uh, okay, Dr. Anthony Terence. Dr. Anthony Terence did his MD from Europe, uh, MRCPCH. Okay, he's a consultant pediatric pulmonology in JKM Hospital, Coimbatore. He has more than 15 publications to his credit. He has been awarded to Professor Henry Clam Award in CMC Velour and Siva Subramaniam Oration Award in 2018. Over to you, sir. Please carry on. Uh, good morning, uh, teachers, senior pediatricians, and my dear friends. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for giving me this opportunity. In the next uh, like 18 to 20 minutes, uh, we'll, I'll discuss a couple of interesting cases which I've seen, and uh, I've learned lots of you know, key messages from these uh, cases. I just want to share these patients with you. Uh, the first patient is a three-month-old male infant, and uh, this uh, infant uh, presented with noisy breathing, and it was present since birth. The preceding uh, two weeks before just uh, before the admission or uh, hospital presentation, this uh, you know infant had recurrent episodes of apnea. Uh, apnea in the sense these episodes are usually triggered by crying, and, uh, and there will be increase in noisy breathing associated with arching of neck, and then the baby becomes unresponsive for a couple of minutes. On stimulation, again, then the baby recovers consciousness. This was the main complaint, and this was the main reason for which the baby was brought to the hospital. And uh, there was no significant associated cough. The baby was being exclusively breastfed and was gaining weight, no feed-related symptoms, and there is no history of uh, choking or regurgitation of feeds. And uh, the baby was initially seen by a family pediatrician and, uh, and he diagnosed the baby having wheeze, which is appropriate. And the child has been given a trial of bronchodilator nebulizations and there was not much of improvement. And the parents have been giving, you know, like home nebulization during such episodes, which are without much improvement because of anxiety, they have to do something during this episode. They were actually giving nebulization during apneic spells. And you have poor response to treatment, and this uh, infant was referred to higher center, our hospital. Antenatal period, uh, the scans were normal, uh, full-term normal delivery with good birth weight, and uh, baby cried soon after birth. Apart from the noisy breathing, there was nothing, you know, obvious in the neonatal period. Immunization development appropriate for age. There is no family history of atopy, no smokers in the family. And um, I'll show a brief clip of the video. Just listen to the noise the baby is making. Audio is not coming. Audio. Before, uh, you know, uh, when, when we are close to the baby, the baby was looking quite well, well thrive, thriving, you know, infant. And uh, baby had a, you know, wheeze, that was audible wheeze. And you can listen from a distance. Baby was saturating quite well. On examination, whenever you have wheeze, uh, it's better to, you know, classify wheeze, whether it's a polyphonic wheeze, you know, or a monophonic wheeze, very important in the, you know, localization of the illness. Therefore, this baby had a monophonic wheeze. And the cardiovascular system examination was normal. Rest of the system's examination was normal. Before, uh, uh, whenever you see a chronic respiratory problem, it's important to identify some red flag signs. Um, uh, the first thing, you know, like any, you know, any uh, infant or child having neonatal onset symptoms, you have to be careful. That's an important red flag sign. Next thing is wet cough, you know, failure to thrive, feed related symptoms, apnea, blue spells. Dif uh, differential air entry, monophonic wheeze, persistent hypoxemia clubbing. These are some of the important red flag signs. 
whenever uh, you know infant or child present with chronic respiratory problem you have to identify in this patient we found that this patient had neonatal onset symptoms the, in the infant also had apnea blue spells and had a monophonic wheeze therefore summarizing this is a 3 month old infant early onset monophonic wheeze poor response to bronchodilator this baby also had spells therefore uh, when when you have wheeze your disease pathology is localized to the intrathoracic airways and uh, again you can classify wheeze into monophonic and polyphonic wheeze polyphonic wheeze is diffuse small airway disease monophonic wheeze is you know it's a large airway localized obstruction large airway obstruction could be extrinsic extrinsic something compressing on the airway or in the wall like tracheomalacia if it is a older kid you definitely have to think about foreign body uh, in this i think the first two conditions extrinsic compression as well as you know airway malacia i think these are the two important differential diagnosis therefore definitely this baby needs to be investigated we did a chest x ray chest x ray doing a chest x ray is very important because we have seen mediastinal masses masquerading as you no know, wheeze therefore there was no mediastinal mass and other thing is uh, you know in infants especially you have to think about vascular compressions or vascular rings and uh, in 80% of vascular rings there are studies showing that you will see some kind of right aortic arch or tracheal indentation in this picture you won't be able to make out any tracheal indentation or right aortic arch the you know this picture seems to be very innocuous the x ray and next thing is like we did a echocardiography echocardiography is a very non invasive investigation you know like therefore it's better to do echocardiography and um, one thing uh, echocardiography will tell us whether child has got any cardiac associated cardiac problems there is no associated cardiac problem and uh, it will also tell the aortic arch anatomy okay here anatomy is normal but what it won't tell us it won't be able to visualize the trachea properly and if the patient has got vascular ring the atritic part might not be shown in the echocardiograph therefore when you think of extrinsic compression vascular ring you should not stop short of doing a x ray and a echocardiography last time i have seen you know babies referred to cardiologist for echocardiography and if echo is normal doesn't mean you know the child doesn't have a vascular ring definitely you have to proceed further therefore we proceeded further echo was normal we proceeded further and we did a bronchoscopy bronchoscopy i'll show the brief clipping of the bronchoscopy and you can see the bronchoscope negotiating the vocal cords going through the trachea in the middle of the trachea you see it's a near total occlusion of the trachea it's a slit like slit like occlusion therefore it is completely obstructed another thing you can appreciate is a pulsatile therefore it's a pulsatile obstruction of the trachea that again tells that it could be a vascular ring therefore next investigation would be definitely going to be ct with contrast or ct angiography and therefore we did a ct angiography it, it's not a complete ring it's basically a compression from anterior anterior compression by anomalous innominate artery therefore you can see the middle of the trachea is quite narrow therefore um, this is the narrowing therefore innominate artery compression syndrome is one of the commonest partial vascular ring. it's not a complete vascular ring and um, most of the times it can be found incidentally when you do a ct scan or a normal child therefore yeah, if the child is symptomatic only you have to treat this child is symptomatic having apneic spells therefore we proceeded to do a surgery which is called aortopexy where you fix the aorta to the anterior sternum so that it relieves the obstruction and uh, this is before surgery and this is after surgery and after surgery child has been doing quite well and um, the so summarizing vascular rings uh, can cause symptoms either due to tracheal compression or esophageal compression they can have either like um, you know strider wheeze or you know regurgitation of fluids or dysphagia and uh, uh, you should not stop sort of doing a ct is bronchoscopy is not absolutely necessary if you don't have bronchoscopy facility ct will give you the diagnosis if you have doubt if it is a vascular ring don't sh uh, short stop of doing a x ray as well as echocardiography it's important to do a ct scan and uh, surgery is indicated only when there is symptoms without symptoms if you find incidentally some something compressing on the trachea is not necessary to do surgery we'll move on to the next patient this is a 6 year old boy he was born at term uh, birth weight was 2.6 kg had neonatal respiratory distress which could not be explained by any other reason it's not ttn it was like bit prolonged for 10 days and required oxygen as well 
there was no meconium aspiration no cardiac problem therefore this is unexplained respiratory distress and then subsequently during infancy child developed a wet cough and recurrent chest infections and uh, child also had persistent nasal dysentery basically uh, you know when we have seen lots of babies coming with you know persistent mukolikite irukum adukapra wet cough irundite irukum and then uh, you need to you know also ask this is a commonest thing like uh, there can be a bit of atopy as well but there is no family history of atopy here again uh, we have identified couple of red flag signs one is neonatal onset symptoms because neonatal respiratory uh, you know distress is there and other uh, thing is wet cough wet cough is always not normal if it is a chronic wet cough therefore we have identified couple of red flag signs therefore uh, is definitely if you identify some red flag signs it's important to evaluate further and first thing is identifying the clinical phenotype basically this is a wet cough chronic wet cough therefore there is a problem with mucociliary clearance and uh, common problems uh, you know like starting in the neonatal period you know it could be a genetic problem genetic problem mucociliary clearance only two is a problem with mucus or cilia problem with mucus is cystic fibrosis problem with cilia is immotile cilia syndrome okay therefore um, how to differentiate clinically is uh, cystic fibrosis won't most of them won't have respiratory distress in neonatal period if there is neonatal respiratory distress which is unexplained is most likely to be primary ciliary dyskinesia and um, what are the there are four cardinal features of primary ciliary dyskinesia and out of that if there is two you can make a di clinical diagnosis out of the four two present in the neonatal period one is neonatal respiratory distress which i explained and second thing is situs inverses therefore um, you know neonatologists can pick up you know pcd early in the neonatal period because these children present either with situs inverses or neonatal respiratory distress which is unexplained and two is as i said mucus oligite irukirathu wet cough irundite irukku out of these four if the child has got any two you can make a clinical diagnosis of pcd if it is chronic and what is the clinical phenotype in different age groups neonatal respiratory distress i have told situs inverse in the neonatal period older kid persistent wet cough nasal discharge and little bit older like if it is a child you can have banquetesis and when you become an adult you can have associated infertility therefore we have seen patients referred by infertility specialists and referring to pulmonology because child has got uh, the patient has got lung problem then testing for pcd and therefore pediatricians we tend to miss even in western setup you know all these patients are diagnosed at later age and they have had at least 50 clinical visits before a diagnosis is made therefore uh, i think um, we have to pick them up a bit early and again the problem is diagnostic there is no single gold standard diagnostic test we use a combination of four diagnostic tests one is um, you know first one is nasal nitric oxide this is not pheno this is from the nose we suck air from the nose analyze is a analyzer if the nitric oxide is low again it indicates pcd second test is what we do is do a nasal brushing is a very non invasive test we do a nasal brushing at the level of inferior turbinate and uh, look in the light with, with the light microscopy and record the video and then analyze it in slow motion so that we can see the ciliary beat patterns this will help whether to find is a immotile cilia is a dyskinetic cilia is a normal cilia and third test is uh, you know this is uh, some of the videos first one as i said is normal you have a you know car wiper like motility forward and back bending stroke and second is immotile and third one is abnormal motility you can see is not the normal it's a stiff the range of movement is very less and this is a very simple investigation it costs very less we can identify this problem with this test and it has got good sensitivity and specificity and uh, our patient Uh, coming to our patient our patient had three cardinal features there is another score i am not going to, to that picard score it was high and therefore clinical phenotype fits in with primary ciliary dyskinesia we did nasal nitric oxide anything more than 200 is normal is now our patient is 44 is very low and uh, hsva showed abnormal motility here is like rotating motility it's not the to and fro motility and the patient also had a genetic diagnosis hidden mutation and um, this is our experience uh, we have set up a you know pcd diagnostic facility 2018 we have screened about 80 patient and diagnosed 31 patients and what we found is the mean age of diagnosis is 9 years by the time the diagnosis is made they already had bronchitis therefore we have to try to diagnose them 
little bit early because treatment is not very complicated. These children have airway clearance problem. Therefore, if you do airway clearance from infancy, you can stop the progression of disease. Therefore, uh, I think pediatricians, you know, have to pick up. And most of them are picked up when they develop full-blown bronchitis and we are very happy to diagnose cartagena syndrome when it is burnt out. Yeah. And uh, PCD summary, as I said, is high index of suspicion. Identify the clinical phenotype. This we can do easily in our clinics. And the combination of four diagnostic tests and some other tests are available. Initiate treatment early to stall progression of disease. Take home messages like... Um, when we come across chronic respiratory problem, we can use the traffic light signal. A healthy child with recurrent viral infection, you know, nothing needs to be done. If it is a child with atopy, the yellow light, you have to slow down. You have to do lots of education, start them on inhale, let's give proper treatment. And if you find out red flag signs, I think you have to stop. You have to stop, evaluate. And if you don't have facility to stop and evaluate, you have to refer to a higher center. And I would like to acknowledge my team who have worked in, in the, these couple of patients. And thank you. Thank you for the nice presentation.